Welcome to Work Required to Lift a Chain by Conceptual Calculus. This video is part of a series on applications of the integral. In this video, we learn how to use a definite integral to find the amount of work required to lift a chain from its initial position hanging over the side of a ship up to the deck of the ship. We start with a simple object which makes the work easy to find, the anchor at the end of the chain. Remember from physics that work equals force times displacement. The force necessary to lift something is equal to its weight. If the anchor weighs 100 pounds and is being lifted 50 feet, then the work done is force times displacement, which is weight times displacement, so 100 pounds times 50 feet, or 5,000 foot-pounds. But what about the chain that supports the anchor? How much work does it take to lift the chain? Suppose the chain weighs 6 pounds per foot. Then 50 feet of chain weighs 6 pounds per foot times 50 feet, which is 300 pounds. Now we just multiply that weight by the distance the chain moves, and we're done. How far does the chain move? That's the tricky part. The link at the bottom moves 50 feet. The link at the top barely moves at all. There's a link in the middle that moves 25 feet. There is no one distance that the entire chain moves. That's why the chain is more complicated than the anchor. Whenever possible, we always start with an estimate. One simple estimate for work required to lift the chain starts by assuming that the entire chain is at the bottom, 50 feet below the deck. Then it is just like the anchor. All lengths of the chain move the same 50 feet, so the work done is force times displacement, which is weight times displacement, so 300 pounds times 50 feet, or 15,000 foot-pounds. This is an overestimate. Most lengths of the chain start higher up, so they don't have to be moved the entire 50 feet. The work to lift the hanging chain is less than the 15,000 foot-pounds that would be required to lift the chain if the whole chain were 50 feet below the deck of the ship. So we expect to find a result that is less than 15,000 foot-pounds. After we find the exact amount of work, we will compare it to this estimate. If only all the links moved the same distance, as in our estimate, then the work would be easy to find. The problem is more complicated because the links each move different distances, so the displacement varies from one link to another. That is an indication that integration could be helpful here. The chain is made up of many small links. Each individual link has its own displacement. Considering one link at a time solves the problem of the varying distances that the different links move. For each individual link, the displacement is constant. To set up the integral, we start by understanding one link of the chain very well. I'm going to focus on the one that is colored blue in the sketch. There's nothing special about this particular link. Whatever we say about this link should be true of all the other links as well. When we know the work required to lift one link, then we can add them up. We need some way to keep track of which specific link we are talking about. We use a variable as a unique identifier, sort of like the address of the link. This means we need a coordinate system. My students should note that I want to see the coordinate system drawn on your paper and labeled appropriately. Most other instructors will also want that. Everything in this problem is vertical. Gravity pulls down and the chain moves up. This means we need a vertical axis. Next, we need to decide where zero is on our axis. You can put zero anywhere you like, so long as you stay consistent with that choice. I'm going to put zero at the deck of the ship. Then we need to determine which direction is positive. You can take either up or down as the positive direction, so long as you stay consistent with that choice throughout the problem. I'm going to take up as the positive direction. Finally, we name our axis. I'm naming the vertical axis Y, which is traditional, but you can use any name you like, so long as you define it clearly and use it consistently. Now we can locate the parts of the problem on our axis. The deck of the ship is at y equals 0, the bottom of the chain is at y equals negative 50, and the various links are at different elevations between 0 and negative 50. 
No two links have the same Y coordinate, so I can identify which specific link I'm talking about by giving its Y coordinate. Because the variable that identifies the specific small part is Y, Y is the variable of integration. Everything we do must be written in terms of Y. In these problems, we always break a large thing up into small parts, and there is always some dimension that is very small. In this case, that very small dimension is the length of a single link in the chain. Because we are talking about a finite number of links, each with a finite length, we call this length delta y. That little triangle is a Greek letter delta. When we consider the limit as the length of a short piece approaches zero, then we will call the length dy. Now that we have notation for the way the chain is broken up into links, we need to remind ourselves of what we are trying to find. We want the work required to lift the entire chain up to the deck, which we're going to find by adding up the work required to lift each of the links. That means we need the work required to lift one link. Work is force times displacement. So to find work, we need the force used to lift one link and the displacement of the link. The link must move from its current location, at y, to the deck of the ship, at zero. That distance is the difference between the two positions. We can find the displacement from the height at the end of the motion minus the height at the start of the motion. This gives us zero minus y, so negative y or the opposite of y. Wait, is the displacement negative? No. Looking at our coordinate system, we see that our link is below the deck, where we put zero, so its y-coordinate is a negative number. Taking the opposite of that negative value of y will give us a positive displacement. That makes sense. We expect a positive displacement because the link moves upward, which is the positive direction. Now, what about the force required to lift the link? That force is equal to the weight of the link, so we need to know how much a link weighs. We found the weight of the entire chain by multiplying the weight of six pounds per foot by the length of the chain in feet. We can do that with one link as well. We multiply six pounds per foot by the length of one link. How long is a link? The length of a link is delta y, so the weight of a link is six times delta y. The weight is directed downward, which is negative. The work is done by the force lifting the link, which must be directed upward, so we use a positive value here. At this point, I want to consider that an actual chain link has a finite length, so the top of the link is higher up and does not have as far to move as the bottom of the link. One link of the chain was a useful mental model for a small piece of chain, but we need to consider even smaller pieces so that the size of each piece approaches zero. That way, the top of a piece and the bottom of the same piece will not move different distances. When we consider the length of one small bit of chain to approach zero, we use dy instead of delta y. Now we have all the parts we need to assemble our integral. The work to lift the link is force times displacement. For a piece of chain with finite length, this is six delta y times the opposite of y. We can neaten this a bit by pulling the negative sign out to the front and writing the delta y last. When we consider the limit as the length of a very short piece of chain approaches zero, we use dy instead of delta y. To add up the work to lift all the links, we integrate. Our variable of integration is y, so the limits of integration must be values of y. The bottom small bit of chain is at y equals negative 50, and the top small bit of chain is at y equals zero, so we integrate from negative 50 to zero. Now that we have set up the integral, we can evaluate it. We have the integral of negative six y dy from y equals negative 50 to y equals zero. The antiderivative of y is y squared over two. Next, we substitute in the limits of integration. The upper limit is zero, so we substitute zero in for y in the antiderivative. Then we subtract the same antiderivative with negative 50 substituted in for y because negative 50 is the lower limit of integration. Finally, we simplify the arithmetic 
and find that the integral is equal to 7,500. That means the work required to lift the chain up to the deck of the ship is 7,500 foot-pounds. Compare this to the estimate. We determined that the work would be less than 15,000 foot-pounds. Our calculated result of 7,500 foot-pounds fits that description. When our calculation agrees with our estimate, we can have more confidence in our results. At the beginning, we found that the anchor alone requires 5,000 foot-pounds of work to lift it to the deck. And now we have found that the chain requires 7,500 foot-pounds of work to lift it to the deck. If we want to lift the chain and the anchor together, we just add those, and we get 5,000 plus 7,500 is 12,500 foot-pounds to lift the chain and the anchor together. This problem lays the foundation for more complicated problems asking us to find the work required to pump fluid out of a tank. We will address that in a later video. Thank you for watching Work Required to Lift a Chain by Conceptual Calculus.